हेलो दिस इज ज्योतिका वेलकम टू एक्सेलिंग साइकोलॉजी आई हैव पुट अ वीडियो ऑन मॉडल्स ऑफ मेमोरी एज अ सैम्पल ई आर क्यू वंस आई पुट दैट वीडियो आई गॉट मैसेजेस फ्रॉम स्टूडेंट्स आस्किंग मी टू गो स्टेप वाइज इन टू डिस्कसिंग एन ई आर क्यू आई हैड आस्ट यू इन दैट वीडियो वेदर यू वुड लाइक मी टू कवर अ स्पेसिफिक ई आर क्यू एज अ सैम्पल ऑफ हाउ यू स्कोर ऑन एन ई आर क्यू and that is what you've wanted so this is a requested video i've taken another erq this time i've taken a neurotransmitters erq in the previous video i had mentioned that most students opt for cognitive erqs in their paper but yes i have come across quite a few students who opt for biological as well it's the second most popular choice i would say so since i've already shared an erq on memory i thought it would be good to take one from the biological approach and this one has come on the latest paper that is why i have selected it may 2024 paper the biological erq was on neurotransmitters effect on behavior so we will do a walk through this is going to be a lengthy video i will point out many things about how you should be writing an erq right from how you should be interpreting the question to how you should be putting down the answer using this one as an example this is a high scoring answer it falls in the highest mark band so this is one out of 22 marks it would have easily scored 21 or 22 so this would be a good way of learning how to write our erqs okay let's begin when we see an erq question we know the first thing we have to make note of is what is the command term that has been used when the command term is discuss how we have to interpret is that we have to give a range of arguments that is the first thing that should come to our mind okay now this is should be the most obvious thing but unfortunately it is not there are so many answers that we go through which don't have any argument students just memorize some format that they have to explain the topic that has been asked in the question so they have to explain the meaning and importance of neurotransmitters and then they have some formula like way of writing such as that they have to follow the general explanation with two studies and critically evaluate each study that is not a helpful way of answering at all and it will never bring you to the highest mark band you cannot have a fixed structure on how to deal with every answer what you should be preparing when you're preparing your answer for a discuss erq is what what arguments you want to give your answer must have arguments and it must have a range of arguments so you can't give a single one now what differentiates a discuss question from an evaluate question is we do not have to be balanced in our view undoubtedly a superior answer does cover both pros and cons of a topic when it comes to arguments but it need not be balanced if we want we can be more critical of the topic in question or if we want we can be more supportive of the topic so these are the two things we need to keep in mind when we see the discuss command term many students also fail to understand what an argument is an argument is just a point that you are making about the topic so it has to be relevant to the topic you can literally take it as a point of discussion some students misinterpret it as argument has to be critical in nature it has to put down the topic which is there it has to be critical of the topic so to say not necessary an argument can be in favor of the topic what is important is since let's take neurotransmission is such a broad topic you have to be specific and make explicit which aspects of neurotransmitters are you going to be dealing with that makes for your argument okay so first when you see the discuss command term in your mind be sure of how many 
arguments and which arguments you want to give so mentally just outline your arguments and which studies you will use to bring about the arguments now one question that immediately comes to mind is how many arguments should be there i would recommend 3 in my opinion that makes for a good range it's not too less it's not just one when a range has been asked for at the same time it's not very excessive what happens is if you have too many arguments if you take five or six arguments you end up compromising on the depth with which you cover each argument so your answer takes a breadth rather than a depth approach and that becomes problematic because then you don't you're not able to show you don't have enough scope to show critical thinking adequately your critical thinking becomes very limited so to not lose out on the criteria of critical thinking and showing elaborate knowledge i would suggest that you restrict yourself to three arguments and explain them thoroughly so this is the first thing to interpret in the question next is to read the question very carefully some students just read the keyword which is neurotransmitters undoubtedly that's the most important thing but when they say on human behavior this is equally important that you have to have some specific behaviors that you are going to be discussing in the answer so it cannot be very general that you don't have any behavior you never point out or link to any behavior that should not be the case with every argument you make which behavior that particular neurotransmitter is influencing should be very very clear to the examiner this we'll understand better as we go through the answer so this is how we need to interpret the question i'll just summarize first give due importance to the command term next make sure you read the entire question and in your mind you're prepared with i would suggest three arguments for each of which you know which study you are going to give in support next what we have to consider is how should our introduction be structured when it comes to the introduction like i said we should not take a very generic approach and very formulaically just go on describing what are neurotransmitters give examples of neurotransmitters and go on talking about which behaviors they influence in a way that is not going to be relevant to the rest of the answer in other words don't just memorize from the textbook which neurotransmitters are there and which behaviors they affect in general and go on writing that that really takes away from the focus of the answer if you see the very first criterion for scoring in an erq is focus on the question right you know that so in the erq rubric you have seen focus on the question is very important so if you are not focusing on the question rather you're going on giving generic points which are not going to be of any use in the rest of the answer then your answer is rather unfocused and you're not meeting the first criterion so in the introduction again there are different ways of writing it i would suggest yes you do begin with the meaning of the general concept so here i have begun with what are neurotransmitters they are chemical messengers of the brain that helps define it but then we don't go on just revolving around what neurotransmitters are meaninglessly just to show that we have memorized well from the textbook immediately we connect it to the question so that influence human behavior and then we immediately begin with the first argument what you see here is the first argument very importantly explained okay so in the introduction without wasting any time i have a three i have a set of three arguments in total like i mentioned in the beginning the very first one i have placed in the introduction another approach could be just to name the three arguments first which i had done in the memory erq you can put it that way also what is important is to be focused on the question when you begin off with an argument or you place your three arguments in the introduction you are being highly focused on the question because that is the requirement in discuss that is why we straight off head to the argument instead of giving general points about neurotransmitters 
so my very first argument here is that neurotransmitter levels fluctuate as people engage in different behaviors so then the argument is or the relevant question is how do they influence behavior this is the central argument which i am making first now i could leave it at this and i could directly come to the study so how do they influence behavior is shown by the study by martinez and kessner but i don't do that why don't i do that because the requirement of the criterion if we look into focus on the question if we want to score in the mark band of 2 that is if we want 2 out of 2 we have to explain the problem in the question so if i just describe the problem if i just leave it at this i meet the one mark mark band because i've just identified the question i've been asked to explain the sorry not the question the problem i've been asked to explain it not to just identify it that's why i need to elaborate further and i need to explain what do i mean by how do they influence behavior okay this is the biggest mistake students do in fact in some resources i would not like to name them students have brought it to my notice that it is mentioned that when you see an erq question the first thing you do is restate the question just put it down into an affirmative sentence that is not the approach to be taken or that should just be the preliminary thing that you do immediately after that you must elaborate upon and explain the argument that you are making you have to give more details on the argument it cannot be a one line no so when i say how they influence behavior what i'm trying to discuss is are they simply correlated with behavior is it that something from the environment influences a person such that his behavior and his neurotransmitter functioning is affected at the same time or is it that neurotransmitters are the causes of human behavior is it because neurotransmitters are released that people start engaging in certain behavior so this is what i mean by asking the question how do they influence behavior i have explained that i want to look into are neurotransmitters simply correlated to behavior or are they causing behavior this is how we explain the problem so here i hope your first biggest myth is dispelled in the first criterion focus on the question when they ask you to explain the issue raised in the question they do not want you to explain what neurotransmitters are generally or to give specific examples of them or for you to say why they are important they want you to explain the argument that you are making regarding neurotransmitters further i have also explained to make a link to the study that when it comes to seeing whether neurotransmitters are causes of human behavior animal studies have been used because they have the advantage of being conducted in highly controlled environments when it comes to animals we can literally cage them down in a place not allow them to do anything unnecessary just manipulate their neurotransmitters and see whether that is influencing their behavior this is the reason why animal studies are used instead of human studies why i am making these points because one they are connected to the argument i have made above because they are talking about cause effect relations secondly because i am going to follow up with an animal study which is going to highlight my argument further one thing is in your erq just like your saq you have to be consistently linking one point to the next nothing in your er can q can be random or out of place every point that you make has to be connected to the previous so when i'm going from a broader argument into a specific study i have to show how that study is coming in that place what justifies using that study for that particular argument so that is what i have done by pointing out why animal research is used in the case of neurotransmitters one more thing is though i have not come across this but many examiners do say that when it comes to neurotransmitters lots of students get confused and they start talking about hormones instead of neurotransmitters so their answers would be about oxytocin or testosterone or estrogen 
make sure you're not making that mistake otherwise you'll completely lose marks not only focus of the question also in research studies criterion also in your um, knowledge criterion because then your answers become totally irrelevant you are not answering the question at all so make sure you know the difference between neurotransmitters hormones and pheromones coming back to the answer another thing that is relevant here is i have introduced the martinez and kessner study now many students ask do we have to cite the year of the study you do not have to cite the year in fact even citing the names of the authors is not compulsory but i do suggest that you just state their names i don't insist on the years that is my approach it can be very difficult to remember so many years across so many studies but i feel taking the effort of remembering the name of the researchers is worthwhile because it's almost as if it is the title of the study we don't really see what is the title we just remember the name of the researcher so we just call it the martinez and kessner study so actually we are not just memorizing names it's a way of referring to the study that's why i suggest you remember the names now whenever we are using a study to support an argument we first need to describe the study it helps show knowledge also and it helps to uh, make it clear to the examiner exactly why the study is in support of the argument so we need to say something about what is done in the study from a marking point of view whenever we cover a study we are meeting the requirements of criterion c right focus on the question was criterion a which i have explained to you also criterion b is met knowledge and understanding because when we explain an argument we are showing knowledge and understanding knowledge and understanding are never differentiated in the marking criteria if you see so knowledge is not independent of understanding again if i would have just left it at how do they influence behavior and i would have not elaborated further that would have shown i just have information i don't have knowledge i don't know what this argument means because i have explained it fully it shows that i have knowledge about what the argument is so i score on criterion b as well i fall in the 5 to 6 mark band now coming to criterion c in criterion c we are expected to firstly very importantly give relevant psychological research also we have to develop the argument equally important is to develop the argument with help of the study now number of things to discuss here one if i'm taking an animal study like i have it is relevant to the question made only and only if i can link the results to humans if i just write an animal study and i do nothing about it i just leave it as it is with students doing their formulaic approach when they use the same formula to answer every question then i am not being relevant to the question asked neurotransmitters how they influence human behavior is of course what the question is so if i'm just going to leave an animal study and no way show how it matters when it comes to human behavior i will not be being relevant so that is one another thing is when it comes to developing the argument that is key and that is missing in most of the answers which fall in the lower mark band students give studies which are not relevant to the argument made because firstly most of the times they don't have an argument they have just selected studies on the basis of this was the study given in my school and the teacher just explained the study and she did not even mention which argument it is supporting so i had no idea that an argument has to be supported so it's just a random collection of studies whichever was done in the school that they place into the answer that is not the way of going about it no doubt your school will select studies and give you you have to make sure to pick up your textbook or whichever resource is being used and find out what is the argument in relation to which that study is given you cannot learn studies in isolation only that will help you to develop the argument another thing is many students use multiple studies to support the same argument so when it comes to our neurotransmitters correlational or causative of human behavior two three studies that is all the studies in the essay will be revolving around this argument only that's a very poor approach make sure you have a range of arguments and you have different studies supporting different arguments 
argument should not be redundant they should develop the argument i'm sorry study should not be redundant they should be developing the argument when you give study after study pertaining to the same argument you're being highly redundant so don't do that in your answer now coming to martinez and kessner study with this i will show you how you are supposed to cover a study in the erq because unfortunately many students go into unnecessary depth of studies which takes up a lot of the word count and leaves room for hardly anything else hardly leaves room for critical thinking or more arguments to follow secondly that is why they find the course so challenging so many students complain about so many studies are they have to memorize so many details of each study well you don't have to memorize unnecessary details of any study you should know that your ib course is different from course of certain other boards in which you have to memorize word to word of every study you are not required to do that your studies are just supportive in nature the answer is not focused on the study okay so make sure you cover the study in a way that supports the argument and nothing else there's no other importance of the study it is not independently important it is important only in context of the argument the best approach to use is whenever you have a study you cover it in terms of aim procedure results and conclusion omitting any unnecessary details such as how many participants were there the exact number of participants exact result which was found in terms of numerical data or exactly which statistics were calculated if any of that is relevant to the discussion say for example you are assessing the methodological quality of the studies and in that somehow sampling technique sample size or a uh, way of calculating results is very relevant to your main argument then you can provide those details usually these details are not relevant to the argument so they can be skipped so now let's look at the example of martinez and kessner how we are following this aim procedure conclusion format when it comes to covering this study now we make use of every point in the essay to further the points we want to make like let's not have general points which are not linked in any way let's have points which are taking the answer further so let's maximize or optimize every point we are making for what i mean by this is like in this study we are looking at how acetylcholine affects spatial memory the question is asking us how neurotransmitters affect behavior so why not take the opportunity to use the aim of the study to point out which one neurotransmitter as an example influences one behavior again as an example see earlier i had told you in the introduction many students would just generally keep on saying okay this is a neurotransmitter this is how it influences this particular behavior here as you are discussing the study automatically you are giving an example right of which neurotransmitter influences which behavior so you don't need to take it separately why waste your word count and why defocus the answer by speaking generally about things which are anyways going to get covered in studies just make sure when you're writing it in context of a study you are uh you know covering uh, specifically or pointing out okay this is the neurotransmitter and this is the behavior that we are talking about so it meets two requirements at the same time you give the aim of the study also and you give an example of the broader question which is asked try to make your answer that way many students struggle with word count the answers become very long that is because precision is not there like i said in one point only when you can make two points why use two separate points and even worse why use different paragraphs to cover those points now in the procedure of martinez and kessner depending which resource you are referring to a lot of details are possible that you can give so there were three groups so it was an independent measures design and this was the quantity of scopolamine given to one set and this was the quantity of placebo given to another set it is not required how is it related to the discussion so i have covered only as much of the procedure as is required in the discussion so you can see i have mentioned the manipulation that is definitely important so i have mentioned that one group gets scopolamine which is an uh, antagonist of 
acetylcholine i have also mentioned that another group gets physostigmine which is an agonist of acetylcholine and i've mentioned i've specified how all of this influences levels of acetylcholine in the brain i have also specified that there's a control group for comparison i have mentioned the dependent variable what is being measured they were measuring how fast rats can run a maze after acetylcholine levels have either been increased decreased or kept constant in the brain is anything more than this important to talk about how we are looking at a cause effect relationship no because i have given the cause the manipulation which is done i have given the effect the dependent variable which is being measured how will other details serve to further the argument which is made like am i talking anything about experimental design does it matter how many rats were there in the study no so there is no need to include those details then i have given the result and in the result also what is important is to point out how acetylcholine impacted the time taken to complete the maze so strictly my result is about that those who received the acetylcholine agonist were the faster fastest to complete the maze that's it i don't need to write anything else now when it comes to a result a result is specific to a study when it comes to a conclusion a conclusion is a broader theoretical generalization that we can make from the result always make sure your result and conclusion are different there are too many students who overlap the results and conclusion that shows that your knowledge is poor you lose out marks in criterion b if you do that because you are unable to differentiate between what is a result and what is a conclusion so conclusion is not about the rats particularly in this study or what treatment they got conclusion is about how acetylcholine plays an important role in spatial memory that is what i have written if you're finding it a little difficult to follow this answer i know because in between i discuss many things but that is my intention i want to show you how to write the answer i don't want you to memorize a specific answer so in case you're finding it difficult i am going to be uploading this answer on my website and i will link uh, it as a free download in the description box below you can download this answer you can go through it and then watch this video or simultaneously as you are seeing this video you can pause and keep seeing the answer so that you understand it better now coming to how this answer would be marked this is like i said mainly pertaining to criterion c in criterion c they want you to cover a research study to support your argument which has to be relevant and has to develop the argument is it relevant yes it is talking about one specific neurotransmitter and the behavior which is affected by it is it developing the argument yes because it is showing a cause effect relationship so definitely it will score highly in this criterion have they asked you to give as many details as possible of the study no so that is not the approach that you need to take now coming to criterion d critical thinking when it comes to critical thinking the gravest mistake which students make is to critically evaluate only studies which they have given in the essay so they just memorize formulaically two strengths and two weaknesses of the study and they will just present it regardless of whether that strength or weakness is relevant to the overall discussion being made or not see what is there just like your study has to be relevant to the argument even the evaluation of the study has to be relevant to the argument made if you take any study in your syllabus you can evaluate it in terms of whatever acronym you have remembered so you remembered grave you can evaluate it in terms of grief if you do that you will find a number of strengths and weaknesses of every study now can you devote your erq to go on elaborating on strengths and weaknesses of every study regardless of whether those evaluation points are relevant to the argument you cannot do that so make sure you take up only those evaluation points which are relevant to the argument made other evaluation points will be considered as trivial in the context of evaluation for example supposing if i uh, say that only these many rats were there in the study so that is why results are not generalizable to the larger population of rats 
Is it relevant to my argument? Am I trying to generalize the results to rats that I should be talking about this? One underlying theme or overarching theme in your answer throughout has to be that every point has to be relevant in some way to what you are talking about. There is no scope for irrelevant details in an ERQ. Always keep that in mind. So in criterion D, if we see the 5 to 6 mark band to develop, uh, to attain that, you have to firstly show good, well-developed critical thinking. So well-developed critical thinking automatically means it cannot be arbitrary. It cannot be any strength or weakness from the top of your head that you are giving. And secondly, it has to be uh, of relevant areas. That means whatever is the argument, it has to be relevant to that. And it has to be consistently well-developed. Again, what some students will do is one or two evaluation points which they make will be relevant to the argument. The remaining will just be to cover whatever target they have in their mind. For example, they've decided I have to only cover two strengths and two weaknesses. So then maybe one strength, one weakness is relevant to the argument and the rest of it is just for the sake of it. It has to be consistently well developed. Every point has to support the other and support the larger theme which is there. So let's see with the example of Martinez and Kessner study. It's like at the same time how we can evaluate the study as well as the broader argument which has been made. In the Martinez and Kessner study, we cannot doubt the cause-effect relationship which is established. Why we cannot doubt it? Because there is a clear cause which is delineated and a clear effect and a laboratory setting has been used to make sure that extraneous variables do not inf interfere in the cause effect relationship now can i just write evaluation like this like can i just say it was controlled so there's clear cause effect relationship definitely not because i have to show well developed critical thinking my critical thinking is well developed only if it can be contextualized to the study or only if it can be made relevant to the study Simply saying, when I say that there is a clear IV and DV, I have to point out which is that IV and DV. So, the IV is the levels of acetylcholine. Uh, you, uh, so, we know that levels have either been heightened or reduced. And the dependent variable is the time taken to complete the maze. Always, wherever you are using evaluation, so be it your ERQ or be it on paper 3 when you are answering uns uh, that unseen passage, Every evaluation point always has to be contextualized to the study or the topic on which the theory on which you are making that point. It can never be general or isolated. So there is a cause effect, there is manipulation of IV, that's too general. That is something you could say about any study that is an experiment. How are you showing that your critical thinking is applicable to the context? Do you know how to use your critical thinking? You have to show that. So make sure you're using wording from the Martinez and Kessner study. You're pointing out what is the IV and DV. And then the point is effective. Now not only that, okay, you've pointed out that there is manipulation of IV. And that shows there is a clear relation. You've contextualized it. Also, you have to make it relevant to the broader argument made. Right? What we are arguing from the beginning, the first argument is all about are neurotransmitters having a causal effect on behavior or are they just having a correlational effect? So now what you see is we are able to say that there is a causal effect. If we look at this study, right? So we are seeing a clear cause effect relationship of one neurotransmitter on one behavior. So that is how it is aligning with the argument we have made before. So how you cover an evaluation point, just to summarize, you make the point, you contextualize it in the study and then you relate it to the broader argument made. But on the other hand, we are not very sure of this causal relationship because the study has been done on animals. Human brains are more complex than that of rats. So no doubt we are seeing a causal relationship but it is highly possible that this causal relationship is applicable only to a lower species like rats given that their brains are much simpler than that of humans 
again to contextualize this point or elaborate further because human brains have an intricate system of neurotransmitter interactions humans have far too many neurotransmitters in their brain compared to rats and these neurotransmitters interact with each other they depend on each other for their release and reception so it is unlikely that what is found in a simple brain like that of a rat would apply to a complex brain not only that the point is further complicated by noticing that humans are also influenced by many socio cognitive factors when it comes to their behavior so no doubt there can be some neurotransmitter being released in the brain in case of a human that could influence their behavior but it would get modulated by environmental factors we can specify some of those such as stress emotional state of the person which is a cognitive factor or it can in fact even get superseded by those factors so in when we look at humans maybe that neurotransmitter behavior relationship does not hold true at all once we look at how socio cognitive factors are influencing humans so it might be only an animal phenomenon that has been seen a poor answer that would fall for criterion d in the mark band of 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 would be the one which would just evaluate the study and say that because it's been done on animals it is not generalizable to humans but a superior answer which falls in the 5 to 6 category is the one which relates this point that generalizability is poor because of use of animals to the larger argument which is being made and goes in detail to show why this is a problem why in the case of humans the same things would not be found which is found in the case of animals so an answer which just gives a general point in critical thinking such as animals are used so generalizability is poor falls in the 1 to 2 mark band an answer which elaborates a little on this point and explains why this is an issue will fall on the 3 to 4 mark band but an answer which does both of this and relates it to the argument made will fall in the 5 to 6 mark band so make sure you have all these features in your critical thinking now another thing we see in this answer is this part of the answer which we have seen so far has covered one argument we have to bring out now the next argument when it comes to the next argument why not again link it or dive into that argument in relation to this one like i said avoid as far as possible to have your essay points just randomly being brought about in the essay try to relate every point with the previous one made so in the same way the arguments that you are making make sure that one argument somehow is stemming out from the previous or is standing in opposition to the previous or is along the lines of the previous one means somehow bring about the connection between the arguments made so that your essay looks pretty holistic that is what makes for a good essay okay and also uh, one more thing is when it comes to criterion e that is the only one i have not discussed so far many students have this misbelief that criterion e applies only to the conclusion of the answer which is not true criterion e is about organization and clarity as you know it has to be throughout the answer it cannot be only in the conclusion so so far whatever we have seen in this answer it's clear why is it clear because if we see the two mark requirement in that it shows clarity throughout the response every concept has been explained i'll just give you one or two examples the argument has been explained first of all in the study what is an antagonist what is an agonist like even the smaller concepts have been explained in a way that say someone who's not from a psychology background would be able to understand what is happening in the study so micro details have been explained and critical thinking has also been explained in the sense it has been contextualized and elaborated so there is clarity throughout the answer as you read the answer you feel the learner knows what he is talking about and there is organization there is an order to things a larger argument is placed first then it is elaborated upon then a study is given in relation to that argument and then the study is evaluated only after it has been explained and the evaluation has been linked back to the original argument made so organization is very clear to grasp and it is very prominent okay 
so this answer will keep on scoring on all the five criterias already and then further even the other paragraphs are written in the same way we'll be able to go across them quicker because they're similar to this one and they will also score on all the five criteria now once that argument is done with that neurotransmitters perhaps do not cause behaviors in humans i have linked it to the next argument which is on reductionism because the same argument another side of it or we can say in continuation of it is the fact then that the study of neurotransmitters and the impact on behavior becomes reductionist so why not take that next it's so relevant to the argument made previously when we talk about cause and effect we are making things reductionist to make them scientific so the argument directly bears on what we've been discussing previously now i could have taken the other study uh, i think yeah that's by antonova which has been done on humans it is similar to the martinez and kessner study which has been done on rats but what would happen if i take the antonova study it would be a repetition in the sense it would be two studies martinez and kessner and antonova which would be supporting one of the one and the same argument which is not a very good approach here like i told you why go on elaborating on the same argument for one thing you that won't help you to cover a range of arguments in the end you might have written so much and taken up so much of the word count that you don't have enough to uh, bring about another argument you don't have enough word count left another thing would be you would not be showing your knowledge you would be showing a very limited side of your knowledge the examiner would get the impression that you know fully one argument related to neurotransmitters that is why you're going on elaborating also you know only of one neurotransmitter and one behavior which is acetylcholine and spatial memory so when you have an opportunity to show diversity and to develop different arguments do not restrict yourself to go on elaborating on only one so what i've done is for the reductionism versus holism argument which is next again i have explained the argument but in a little different way like as such it's already explained in the previous paragraph if you go through it but with the context of the study again i'll be explaining it a little bit after writing the study so that is also one approach which you can take that is why also i insist that don't have a formula like way of writing the answers because then this is what happens you are just busy for following the template you are just worried about am i meeting the formula or not just take the answer where the flow of the answer takes you so if at some point you're feeling after the study is explained you'll be able to explain your argument better you can organize in that way if some place you feel before the study is made it is important to elaborate on the argument you'll be able to do it that way so write in a way that is more suitable to the answer being written rather than just uh, trying to follow some typecast way of writing so for this argument i have taken the crockett et al study crockett et al study as you know is about neurotransmission and pro social behavior again only relevant details i have described it looks lengthy but somehow it's important because uh, the study does have some dimensions to it okay so where a study requires more of elaboration you can do that where it requires less do that but again i have not given unnecessary details just because i've covered more at length does not mean anything and everything about the study i have written so again i've primarily explained the manipulation how participants were administered citalopram so that uh, serotonin can be increased in their brain and how uh, the same participants in another condition were administered placebo here you will see i have mentioned double blind design and it might seem odd to you or it might seem like an unnecessary detail but there is a reason for putting in this detail into the study because i am going to be using it in evaluation so always the points which i give in the study to meet criterion c should be relevant to the evaluation that is coming ahead and to the discussion being made earlier other than that i don't need to give details so yes if some micro detail is there which helps in the evaluation further i can include that okay then i've also explained the dependent variable the only reason why this study is covered in a little more length is because this is about moral dilemma and i need to give an example of moral dilemma to point out how pro social behavior is exactly being influenced by uh, 
i'm sorry serotonin so how it is being influenced i'm not able to explain how pro social behavior is being seen without giving this example that is why i am giving it so as much detail i am giving as is necessary to show the connection between the neurotransmitter and the behavior so i've given the example of the trolley problem in the crockett study because that is relevant here then i've uh, explained the results results you know serotonin levels increase then there was more tendency to not harm a person and that we show pro social behavior to that person conclusion again like i said has to be a theoretical generalization so overall it shows that serotonin does modulate emotional reactions and thereby a uh, pro social behavior so this study i have covered in the same way that i had covered martinez and kesna and i also explained to you why it looks more elaborate in criterion c again it will fall in the 5 to 6 mark band easily because lot of relevant details are given and it is relevant to the overall argument being made which is about how studies can be reductionist to explain my point further about reductionism and to evaluate the study i have explained how it has been done in a controlled setting which is devoid of any type of real elements which are found to be present when people are making moral judgments so in a crockett type of study in the laboratory when i'm deciding should i divert the trolley or not i am not influenced by any emotions by any uh, support or uh, pressure that might be coming from other people who are in the same situation unlike what would be the case if really there was a trolley that i was driving or i had to decide whether to divert the trolley or not that real situation would be far more pressurizing and emotional in nature compared to what is done in this study so in critical thinking i'm talking about the lack of ecological validity in this study in a way that makes it very reductionist again i do point out the strength of the study that there is manipulation of citalopram and that is why there is a clear cause effect relationship no doubt like serotonin has been manipulated to show that it has a direct bearing on pro social behavior but unfortunately because it has been done in a very restricted laboratory environment we are still not sure how real elements such as social pressure would modulate this cause effect relationship we are also not sure whether serotonin at all would be a cause of pro social behavior when socio cognitive factors are present for example when i become very emotional it is possible some other neurotransmitter would take the place of serotonin and determine what i do or just my thinking would decide what i do regardless of what neurotransmitters are being released now again to reiterate the point i made previously a poor answer which would fall in the 1 to 2 mark band for criterion d critical thinking would just talk about ecological validity being a weakness in this study an answer falling in the 3 to 4 mark band would elaborate a little and point out what is unrealistic about the study but a 5 to 6 mark a answer would do all of this it would show that ecological validity is poor point out what is artificial about the study and link the study to the broader discussion argument which is being made and that is what you get to see over here following that i want to talk about the applicability of neurotransmitters like how they help in bringing about treatment of people who are suffering from various disorders but i need not do that in an isolated way in the sense i don't need to do it in a way that has no bearing with what has been answered previously so what we can do is to link it to what is said previously first of all we say regardless of whether there's a causal relationship or not they are helpful these type of studies are useful and investigating neurotransmitter and behavior is definitely not irrelevant so here what i'm trying to show is the previous two arguments are important to think about how neurotransmitters might actually have a very limited influence on behavior but that does not mean that we are calling out the whole research on neurotransmission as useless or we are saying that it, these type of study should not be done rather they should be done and what is the reason why they should be done is what i'm bringing about in this argument because they have the potential to treat mental disorders here i have picked up the study by freed et al which shows how these neurotransmitters can be 
modulated by drugs and that can help to overcome a problem as serious as Parkinson's disease and I'm sorry it's not by drugs it is by transplantation of stem cells now to get into that study which is going to be supporting my argument again narrowing down the argument a little I point out that the exact mechanisms are still under investigation like how exactly even if neurotransmitters are not causes still how they are influencing behavior we are not very sure but therapeutic rigor is there it is sure to bring about therapeutic benefits that we are sure because immense research is telling us that that is the case and then I point out that Freed et al is one example of all the research being done in this area that is how I connect and begin with that study Coming to the Freed study, again the same format, aims, procedure, results, conclusion. So in the aim, I am able to bring about one more neurotransmitter. In the first argument, I spoke about acetylcholine. In the second, serotonin. In the third, I am talking about dopamine. In the first, the behavior was spatial memory. In the second, the behavior was prosocial behavior or moral judgment. And in the third, it is going to be Alzheimer's disease overcoming of alzheimer's disease so you can see how i have brought about three neurotransmitters and their effects on three different behaviors throughout the answer but i've done it with the help of arguments with the help as a discussion standpoint bringing about various aspects of neurotransmission i have not done this in isolation so i have not memorized okay first let me talk about this so i'll talk about what is acetylcholine, what is spatial memory, give the study by Martinez and Kessner. Then I'll talk about what is serotonin, what is push. That is not the way of writing. It's not a describe answer. It's a discuss answer. So an argument has to be at the heart of everything. Okay, so coming back to the Freed et al. study, I have given the aim. Then I have given the relevant procedure, which is how there were two groups of participants with Parkinson's disease. I have also taken a moment or one sentence to explain what is Parkinson's disease to meet criterion B and show my knowledge. I have also explained how uh, one of the groups had, an, uh, had a surgery which gave them new dopamine stem cells and another group which underwent sham surgery. Again there are too many details on the Freed et al study and you would note there are many ethical considerations revolving it. You would note that there are many uh, details given such as from where did they get the stem cells from aborted fetuses things like that are they relevant over here no is my argument about the ethics of these studies no would they be relevant in an ethical considerations answer yes so those are not details that I should be covering here keep in mind that criterion A which is there focus on the question that also applies throughout the answer just like criterion E applies throughout the answer so nowhere can you become unfocused and get into irrelevant details so what is relevant over here when it comes to how it helps overcome the problem of Parkinson's is to talk about what treatment was given to the participants and that is only what I have covered in the results we see yes dopamine produ production increased in the brains of those who got the stem cells because the stem cells help to create the dopamine producing cells and ultimately we do see a reduction in their symptoms again if you see in the textbook you will find that there is a specific percentage given i think like 28 percent reduction in symptoms you can specify such things but they are largely irrelevant and that is why i have not written about them so i have made my arguments and then coming to the conclusion of this answer Okay, now here you might wonder why critical thinking paragraph is not there. It is not very much required. That is why. My whole point in application to or uh, application of the neurotransmitter to uh, resolving problems is clearly seen in this study. Like if I was to give the strengths and weaknesses, what would I talk about? Like I would say, okay, the study is valid, not valid. It's clearly valid. And uh, because again there is manipulation which is very obvious I've spoken about that in previous paragraphs and if I talk about weakness like say that uh, it is applicable to younger patients they recovered more not the older ones not very relevant to the argument being made because the argument is that it does benefit people Parkinson's is something that largely affects older people I'm not saying it does not affect younger people it does 
बट इफ इट इज शोइंग प्रोमिस इन ट्रीटिंग ओल्डर पीपल माई आर्ग्यूमेंट इज प्रूफ और द पॉइंट आई एम मेकिंग इज प्रूफ दैट इफ वी लुक इन टू न्यूरो ट्रांसमिटर्स दे डू हेल्प टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ बिहेवियर इज इन्फ्लुंस इन हाउ मेंटल डिसऑर्डर्स और फिजिकल डिसऑर्डर्स कैन बी ओवरकम सो योर वॉट आई वॉन्ट यू टू वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग अबाउट इज अगेन सम स्टूडेंट्स हैव दिस माइंड सेट दैट जस्ट बिकॉज क्रिटिकल थिंकिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड सो अगेन दे गो बाय द टेम्पलेट अप्रोच लाइक इफ यू सी एवरी थिंग अंडर लाइन दे अप्रोच इज अ टेम्पलेट और अ फॉर्मैट विच दे हैव मेड सो इट हैज टू ओली बी आर्ग्यूमेंट स्टडी इवेल्युएशन आर्ग्यूमेंट स्टडी इवेल्युएशन वेन एन इवेल्युएशन इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड नाई दर इज द एनी फर्दर आर्ग्यूमेंट दैट आई एम गोइंग टू लिंक इट टू नॉट इज द एनी थिंग दैट्स नॉट ऑब्वियस इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द स्टडी दैट द इवेल्युएशन विल पर्टेन टू द स्टडी इज लाइक सेल्फ स्पीकिंग इट्स सेल्फ ऑब्वियस आई फॉर गॉट द टर्म वी यूज सेल्फ डेक्लरेटिव टाइप ऑफ स्टडी then what is the need to bring about a critical thinking paragraph which is not going to add anything special to what is already said the study by itself is providing knowledge also like it's meeting criterion b it's a study so it's meeting criterion c and by itself by showing in the results that the treatment is helpful it is meeting criterion d as well it's showing critical thinking as well there's no need for any further critical thinking so that is why i have not elongated the answer further by including a separate criterion d paragraph also when i see students have templates or formats in mind one typical template is this particular paragraph will meet a this paragraph will meet criterion b this one will meet c this also does not work it's a poor approach like i told you every criterion is applying throughout the answer so why are you trying to dedicate different paragraphs to different criteria don't do that rather keep on writing like i have told you in a relevant manner automatically you will end up meeting all the criteria in all the paragraphs having said that let's come to the conclusion from the answer uh, what we can conclude is that neurotransmitters do influence behaviors there's no denying that only what is there because there are too many experimental studies we are able to see causal relationships which fail when we try to link them in the real world they are reductionist in nature uh, which makes their uh, generalizability limited like we are not able to have faith that really neurotransmitters would cause behaviors because they study neurotransmitters and behavior in way too much isolation nevertheless even if neurotransmitters and behavior relationship is reductionist there is great applicability of the use of neurotransmitters like they are beneficial and there is no denying that it is worthwhile to study the topic of neurotransmission so what is this all about you'd realize it's a summary of whatever i have said earlier so good conclusion just summarizes the broad argument helps to meet criterion e largely where uh, we are showing that there is clarity in our answer we are able to bring about the essence of all the arguments that we have made and definitely from an organization point of view it gives a good finish to the answer because it recaps whatever has been said and briefly helps the reader to just get an overview of whatever had been said and to just like consolidate all the information given in their mind so conclusion is more or less a summary of all the arguments that have been made Uh, many students try to also mention one line conclusion for each of the studies in the broader conclusion that is not very important because in discussion the focus is on argument no one is interested in the individual studies independent of the arguments being made so when an answer is all about arguments the conclusion should be summarizing those not individual studies or individual theories if that is the answer which is coming so individual theories which are there that should not be in focus then you lose out on criterion a focus would not be much the word count is the last thing i can talk about maximum word count for an erq is 1 to 0 0 you shouldn't exceed that so this is well within and overall i would say regardless of which answer it is like not only this one ERQ should be somewhere in my opinion more than thousand words because if they are less generally what is found why are they less because either the arguments are less that is why or the critical thinking is not detailed enough it just touches the surface so like i said very generic points are there without making them relevant so in those cases we find that word counts are less somehow if you are a writer like who's 
exceptionally brilliant in the sense in very very few words you're able to give good elaborations then it suffices that you write less than thousand words otherwise not just for the sake of writing more than thousand words but to be detailed enough and to cover a range of arguments try to keep your answer above thousand words and again that's something that will happen automatically it you you won't have to put special effort into extending the word count if you follow all the advice that i have given in writing an erq in this video that is all i have to share today if you still have any doubts or questions on how to write and uh, discuss erq or even about the neurotransmitters or biological erqs in particular you can leave a comment in the box below any questions related to the video i will answer only in the comment section if you're looking for classes or tuition for your ib psychology course especially hl students i take sl as well but hl students need quite a bit of help then you can contact me on my phone number which is given below or my email id i will uh, i'm thinking of doing one thing and most probably i'll do it the same answer i will just mark out from a criteria point of view in a shorter video maybe 10 or 15 minute video and i'll upload it in which uh, just you know if you want a summary of whatever i've said in this or you strictly want to see only scoring without any suggestions on my part on how to write the answer you'll be able to see in that video so i'll try to follow with that video also very soon as of today this is all i have to share let me know what your doubts are in the comment section below thank you for watching